So as you may remember, we did an affordable PC that you can actually buy, at least at the time of filming that video, using the Ryzen 3 3200G CPU and a Palette 1650 Super. Now, with GPU shortages being what they've been for the last few months, we wanted to show you how to increase your FPS without updating your GPU. Oh yeah, let's do this. Oh my god, is that a supernova lighting up the sky? Oh wait, no, it's the new Nova addressable RGB fans from Chief Tronic. With dual lighting rings, each with 16 individually controlled LEDs and support for all the major motherboard software, as well as the option to daisy chain them for even easier installation. These fans will surely light up the night sky. Click the link in the description to find out more. So for anyone who maybe has an older PC, this one is gonna be for you. Just for some perspective, Matt, who is behind the camera, say hi, Matt. Hello. He had a Devil's Canyon 4790K CPU, which for the record was an amazing chip for its time, and a GTX 1063 gig. I know, he was cheap on that. He plays CSGO and pretty much nothing else. I mean, religiously, he plays nothing else. Now at the time, he was getting 80 to just under 100 FPS. And we all know a game like CSGO and having high frame rates can really actually give you the edge over the competition. A simple upgrade of his motherboard memory and processor and he's now seeing close to 400 frames per second out of the same GPU. Yes, he does plan to upgrade his graphics card at a later date when I guess things get a little bit more normal, but for now, those are some seriously huge gains. Now, obviously the move from DDR3 to DDR4 will make a difference, but you'd like to think that the change of CPU was the biggest thing. So can it be the same for your rig? Well, potentially if you're rocking an older platform, this could be the right move for you. Now it is worth noting that you'll not always be able to upgrade your CPU and see, I guess, such a huge FPS increase, but in some cases it will most definitely help. If you're not sure if it will work for you or not, just pop over into our Discord, link is in the description below, shameless plug I know, and ask in our tech support channel, and more than likely you will get a few replies from people who have done similar moves to what you're attempting to do yourself. So back to, I guess, what we actually have here. We created this budget build, and today we're gonna to be swapping out the Ryzen 3 3200G for a Ryzen 5 3600X. I mean, the price difference between the non-X and this, it's just worth it, trust me. And we, we basically wanna see what kind of FPS gains we're gonna get in different titles. Now, it is worth noting that not all games are equal and some games are, I guess, a bit more CPU intensive. So hopefully, we should see a nice increase across some of the titles that we're testing. Other than that, we're gonna keep things, I guess, identical system-wise. Now, upgrading your CPU is, I guess, quite easy, especially if you're using a stock cooler. Now in our build, we are using the uh, AMD Wraith Stealth stock cooler, whereas the 3600X comes with the Wraith Spire, which is basically, I guess, a more kind of meatier version. It's slightly taller due to the larger heatsink partition, but the fan itself is, well, identical. So first up, we need to take the CPU cooler off, clean up the 3200G and take it out of the motherboard. If you've never done this kind of thing before, what you basically wanna do is remove all four of the screws holding it onto the retention bracket. Now, once the actual cooler is off, you can look at removing this cable just here, passing it back through the case, and then you can actually look at taking the CPU cooler off. Now, if it does feel like the CPU is potentially gonna come with it, just give it a little wiggle before you actually pull it off. Now, to clean the thermal paste, I always like doing this while it's in the CPU socket because that way, you, well, you haven't actually got to touch anything. And I quite like using these handy dandy sort of wipes from Notua, but toilet tissue or anything like a rag, as long as it's clean, is going to work. Give it a little wipe and the thermal paste will be gone. We can then look at moving the arm to release the CPU and taking it straight out of the socket. You can then grab your new shiny 3600X and basically do the reverse. So we can put it into the slot like so, pull the arm down to lock it into place and then look to apply the thermal paste. Now again, I tend to use Notua. Now some CPU coolers will actually come with thermal paste pre-applied, so just double check that. If it doesn't, like our one, we just wanna put a small kind of pea-sized amount onto the CPU and then we can look at putting the CPU cooler back into place. 
Now, depending on the CPU that you are using, you may find that you are gonna use the same CPU cooler. As I mentioned, in our case, we're not. We are going with a slightly larger one. So just hold the retention bracket into place, line everything up like so, and then you can look at screwing it back down into place. Now, when you do this, you don't wanna sort of tighten one screw too much. Just get enough that it's biting. Go to the opposite corner and get that one into place and try and do it all evenly. Now, once you've got every single side biting into the retention bracket, you can then continue to tighten them up fully. Now, once you've got your existing cooler or your new cooler on there, you can take your fan cable, which comes off of the cooler itself. I'm just gonna route it just through this gap, just so we have a little bit of cable management. We can then take it and put it back onto the CPU fan header on top of the motherboard. So once you've done that, it's just a matter of getting your power cable, putting it in, and if everything went well, pressing the power button, and everything lights up. And with this one, we have actually got the one with RGB on it, so it looks even better. Now, when you boot the system up, it's more than likely gonna tell you exactly what you've done and that you've installed a new CPU. It's like, thank you, BIOS. Tell me something I don't know. Now, for the most part, you'll need to go into the BIOS, save and exit, and that's pretty much it. So nice and easy there. Now, once we do have it booted, we should now have, I guess, a noticeable difference in FPS, as long as my theory is correct. So again, we're gonna test the same seven games that we tested before, including Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Cyberpunk 2077, Doom Eternal, Fortnite, and more, to show you the difference that upgrading just your CPU can have to your budget-built system. So without further ado, let's roll them beautiful benchmarks.
So with the gameplay out of the way, things are looking good, but how does it all kind of compare against the figures that we had before we actually changed the CPU? Remember, we had a Ryzen 3200G in here, so I guess not the most powerful, but I do guess it's kind of on par with a high-end chip from previous gens. So anyone on, I guess, Devil's Canyon CPUs or 6600K or similar will likely be able to relate to kind of what performance increases you're actually gonna get. So starting with Apex, we tested at both 1080p and 1440p and saw a bang on 100% performance increase at 1080 and 56% at 1440. This just goes to show that at 1080p going from 64 to 128 FPS, you could even consider going to a slightly different aspect ratio monitor and still be getting some amazing numbers. If you've not played Apex on an ultra wide, definitely give that a go if you ever get the chance. In Call of Duty Warzone at 1080, we saw an increase of 74% from 54 to 94. You could likely get away with increasing your resolution or adding on some nice effects and still getting a pretty decent frame rate at the end of it. Moving over to Matt's favorite, isn't that right? Yes, CSGO, we saw an 84% increase with the 3600X at 1440p and 68% at 4K coming in at 123 FPS. Obviously the competitive gamers will likely be playing at 1280 by 960 or similar, so you could expect that FPS to jump well above 500 if you unlock that frame rate limit. So things are looking pretty amazing with these huge jumps. So let's move over to a single player game, Doom Eternal, which got an amazing 5.17%, is that right? Yeah. 5.17%, so it's not huge, but it's still something, giving us 61 FPS. So now I guess we're above that magical 60 FPS number. I guess you could see Doom Eternal as less kind of CPU intensive. So if anything now, our GPU is actually holding us back slightly. Moving back to the multiplayer battle royale scene and Fortnite, love it or hate it, we had to do it. At 1080p, we saw an increase of 118%, while at 1440p, it really allowed that GPU to stretch its legs with a huge 157% increase to 108 frames per second. I think anyone would be happy with those kinds of numbers in all honesty. Now, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which we know can look absolutely amazing, well, that saw a 50% increase at 1080p and a larger 87% increase at 1440p. So I guess just alleviating that bottleneck can really make the world a difference, even in some of the most demanding games. Lastly, the hottest game as of late, Cyberpunk. At 1080p, it saw an uptake of 22%, taking us just over, again, that magical number, giving us 61 FPS. Now, Cyberpunk is a great game in terms of visuals, and you can actually play it fluidly at 30 FPS. So this just gives you a little bit more room to ramp up them settings and sacrifice some frames in return. I mean, in all honesty, it's not that bad of a trade-off at all. So what's the key takeaway here? Well, as you saw, this is a fairly easy upgrade to do and doesn't exactly take much time to do either. And with the current state of the market at the moment, it just goes to show that a GPU, I guess, isn't the be all and end all if you're running older hardware or even slower hardware. Now, you may be surprised with the results that you're able to get. And while it's not going to give, I guess, great results in every game, like we saw with Doom Eternal, it still gave us something and you can't complain at that. Now, one thing you will notice is that the huge jumps that we did get were typically in Battle Royale multiplayer titles. And with them being more popular than ever, I think this could be a great move for, well, a lot of gamers. And who knows, maybe you'll be able to save up some money in the meantime for a GPU upgrade later down the line, if you still need it after this. And obviously that all depends on when they're available. Now, it does go to show that this is definitely a viable option to help I guess get the most out of your system without having to pay those silly scalper prices. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, you know exactly what to do. And I guess if you love what we do, consider maybe supporting us through Patreon, where you get access to exclusive behind the scenes content, early videos, exclusive contests, special rights on our Minecraft server that's coming very, very soon, special privileges on our Discord, link below, and much, much more. You can find the link in the description below for everything to do with that. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.